thanks for checking out my new video about uh, the 2018 Honda Accord Sport. This is a 1.5 liter with um, I don't know what I was getting ready to say there. Anyways, uh, 1.5 liters uh, automatic uh, sport 19 inch wheels 235 40 R rating um, and so the car is just over a month old now uh, got it just before Christmas last year and uh, it works I mean I, I love it it's uh, very sporty the, the only thing if you look at the back it kind of resembles like a hatchback as I move around kind of looks like a hatchback from the side uh, the front angle there uh, the front end looks like a big mouth just opening so I think they were trying to somewhat resemble like a charger type of thing um, not a big huge fan of that but um, I'm not really the one looking at the front end of it I'm worried about the inside uh, so this is a 1.5 liter uh, it does come in uh, 1.5 and 2.0 uh, I chose to get the 1.5 I don't need all that power on the 2.0 it's uh, both of them are uh, sport a lot of a lot of speed 1.5 is powerful enough you don't need all that other uh, extra juice get out of my uh, view there sucker that hot Toyota Prius there driving by um, so the like I said 19 inch rims I believe very low to the ground uh, some great lines there on the bottom of the car and uh, look a, again as you look at the back you can kind of kind of resembles a hatchback uh, so some parts of the body style very nice very sleek um, very sporty and other parts not so great in my opinion but to each his own uh, the rims uh, alloy rims very sporty uh, this car has four wheel disc brakes all the way around so much better handling and stopping power uh, smoother than the than the, than the uh, shoes that they used to have so uh, all four wheel disc brakes and I zoom in there for you uh, very nice very elegant uh, very sporty and definitely I hope you enjoy the rest of the video as I break it down so now what I'll show you guys is the side. So when I click, when I hook, when I, I can't even speak right now, when the hood is um, in the furthest position back to hold it up, the, the lid, uh, you can see that it gives a wide open space for any kind of work that you want to do on it, mechanic work, clean it, whatever it may be. So that hood goes uh, really far back from a, um, for an access standpoint. So the engine itself, um, like I said, is a CVT transmission, um, 1.4 liters. A couple things to mention here relative to the, the engine itself is um, horsepower is 92 um, at 5,500 RPMs, uh, torque 192 as well at 1,600 RPMs. Um, city uh, for gas mileage uh, city is 29 uh, highway is 35 I think when I was uh, headed up the freeway up to Philadelphia not too long ago I think I was averaging 38 39 there thereabouts so you can get much over you can get higher than 35 uh, for this um, earth dreams motor that Honda has uh, four cylinder like I said 16 valves total so four valves per cylinder it's an automatic transmission. This one is uh, with Sport CVT. Front wheel drive, uh, as we all know, that is uh, mostly common on cars these days. Overall, the car itself, um, the base is, is pretty wide, um, a little bit wider than the previous year's Honda. Uh, the the um, fuel capacity is 14.8 uh, gallons uh, wheelbase is uh so width is um 111 inches 0.4 overall length 192.2 um uh with with the mirrors 
Um, that doesn't make no damn sense. I don't know what I'm reading from, but that didn't make no sense to me. Anyways, um, total weight of the car, or total height, let's go with total height, is uh, 57.1 inches, so just shy of uh, 5 feet. Um, total weight of the car is 3,200 pounds. Um, like I said, the tires, I think I said earlier, 235, 40, R19s, R-rated. Um, maximum towing. So I wanted to touch on maximum towing of this car. So maximum towing of this car is 1,000 uh, pounds. So for you crazy people out there that want to try to tow something with this car, don't do it. Don't do it. It's a thousand. It total total max towing is is a thousand pounds. You put a trailer to that sucker. That's probably a thousand pounds by itself, or pretty darn close to it. So don't don't try to put anything inside. You don't show anything with this sport car. Um, payload. So total base capacity. That means occupants with inside the the cab. Uh, the car is uh, eight hundred fifty pounds. So uh, it seats five people. Right, five seats. So, you take 850, divided by uh, 5, right, you, a couple hundred pounds a piece, just under that, and you're maxed out. So, uh, be careful, make sure you don't overload it. Okay, moving on to Honda Sensing. So, in the grill, you'll see that little black box right there, that is, uh, it helps the detect cars in front of you so it's it's a combination between this and the camera which I'll show you in a second up on the window that um, the suite of safety features that comes with the new Honda so Honda sensing um, helps many different things uh, lane departure assist um, crash warning or well, hopefully prevention um, from that happening so in the window uh, obviously, no more crack, as you, if you see my other video, there's no more crack in the window, so happy about that. So the camera I'm talking about is right here, as you can see, right there inside that little triangle. Uh, there's the camera. So that, along with the Honda sensing down on the dash, on the grill, is a combination of a couple things, which I'll talk about later in the video when I get on the inside and, and all the wonderful safety features that it comes with. But that is that part of the camera uh, is what like I said in the other video made this um, replacement of the window so expensive so that being said um, the grill along with that right there makes the uh, makes the whole suite all come together and all the features so uh, I'll take it out a little bit now um, the trunk is a little bit bigger in size than the other one don't mind my trash or not trash but my stuff I have in the trunk as I move that out of the way and goof around with that so you can look at the ground, sorry. Uh, so, obviously, I uh, pulled out the stuff and the trunk, very big trunk like I said. And, uh, yeah, my my um, thing I have in there from U-Haul from years ago, I've had that for a while. So, I just laid that down there so hopefully it protects the trunk a little bit more if I put stuff in there and stuff doesn't slide around like typical. Uh, the back seat, 60-40 split. Uh, there's the clip and the, the pull for this, the 40 part. Uh, and then there's the uh, part for the 60% of the back seat to uh, land down. The good thing about this one versus the prior years, because um, I have a 2015 before. So when you pull the clip on the 2015, as I goof around, um, You'll see that it's, um, I don't know if I've showed easier on this side. So when you pull the handle, right, so I pull the handle, and you can you can tell that the seat didn't lay down. Obviously, it's got to be pushed down or pulled. Um, but see, as I pull it and I go around to the other side, you will be able to see, I'm not pulling the lever, but I will be able to pull the front down. There you go. So sorry about all the camera angle work. BS there. Uh, but pulling it down, I could do that with one hand. Um, so in the prior year, I had to pull the handle and push and, and pull or someone pull the seat down 
at the same time. This one, it unclips the um, the side by itself, and don't mind me, I was wiping the water off the trunk there, the end. Um, so yeah, overall, very good. Um, and here's the picture from the inside, uh, looking um, on the back again, my rag there, uh, and umbrella. And uh, so yeah, very big back seat. You can fit a lot of stuff in there, and it slides all the way to the front. You can obviously scoot the seats uh, forward if you, if your things that you want to slide to are uh, longer than the standard room there. And um, that's it for the trunk and the back seat relative to um, the uh, overall. So as I close up here and uh, take another picture, another show you guys another view of the front end and the grill and uh, the overall just stylish of the car. And that's really about it. So that's the outside view and all of the specs and all the stuff that um, is part of the outside and the security system or security features, I guess, crash. Uh, the Honda Sensing. Uh, that being said, I will, the next part of the clip will, will transition to the inside and talk about the um, electronics that come inside and all of the wonderful um, features, bells and whistles that you have relative to the uh, safety features and everything else on the inside. All right, so moving to the inside, now we'll talk about the back first. And the back has, uh, each side has cup holders, a little compartment for some folks to put things uh, for your passengers. Uh, that being said, the seats, uh, like I said, you have your uh, two cup holders there. Uh, you have your uh, two seats if you have the two passengers, I guess, if you have the cup holder armrest down. Uh, also fits three people comfortably in the back. We have leather on the outside of the leather wrapped seats both on the front and the back. We have cloth material in the middle and more leather on the center the center part of it as well. Um, we have a compartment here for anybody who wants to you know put their shelf on there or anything else that they can put there. Um, not a, so on the back you have two obviously you have two seats uh, uh, you have a compartment on the one side and no compartment on the other one. Uh, no, no, um, for magazines or anything like that. So, not a big fan of that if I was sitting in the back, but I'm not sitting in the back, I'm sitting in the front of this car. Um, two, three armrests, or not armrests, um, headrests that are very comfortable and very soft to the touch. So, what I want to show you here and talk about is when I bought the car, I asked the lady, I said, Hey, by chance, what the heck is this little thing right here? This little, uh, um, yeah, that right there. So there you go. Um, camera angles, rookie move. Um, so I asked her, I said, what's this for? She goes, you know, I don't know. So she couldn't explain to me what it was. I already knew what it was. I was just testing her to see if she knew what it was. So ultimately, if your car ever dies, right, the trunk doesn't have a latch to it, right? I mean a latch. It doesn't have a key entry point to it. It's uh, electric or uh, the key entry is right here. So um, you can't open it with your finger. It's kind of tough. It is, it is clipped on there. So let me get my key out for a second. So as I take my key out, uh, you put it in that little lift right there. And bingo. There you go. So you have a lock mechanism here. So the lock mechanism, car ever dies, uh, and your remote doesn't work because it doesn't pop open the trunk. And then you have, come on, turn it. There we go. Bingo. Trunk is open. Uh, and there you go. So, voila. Close that. And then I'll show you again. We'll turn the little, uh, we'll turn it. I don't know if you can see it from that angle. Nope. So here we go. So the key, we turn it. Bingo. And now, trunk is open again. So, uh, a safety feature from the inside. Um, not many people know about that. So unless you're, unless you're the owner, um, you're not going to know any valet people that's going to know that that is there if you have a valet your car. So, um, we'll put the clip back on it and, uh, hopefully we never have to use this, um, feature to get into the trunk. And the reason I say get into the trunk is relative to the, um, to get your jumper cable. So the car dies, you got to get your jumper cables, uh, out of the trunk and you can't get to it because 
battery's dead and there's no key entry from the trunk. So, uh, very good. Okay, so now we are going to move to the part of the video where I drive and kind of show you some of the driving features. So, as we just take our little trip out the parking lot. Um, so a couple of things that I want to show you guys was the little Go Speed Racer. Uh, if I wasn't filming this video, I would catch you and piss you off. Um, so, uh, that being said, let's move, let's move on. So, like I said, there's, there's the features have to do with the lane departure and the uh, front end uh, monitoring of, of cars. So, I will turn on my... Um, Honda Sensing. And so as you can see, I'm the the lines there show the so show the, the lines on the on the other side of the car. So what I'll do is I'll turn it on. There's my cruise control going 33 miles an hour. Right? Uh, and I will hit the little other buttons. So you'll see that car. See how that car just went very far in front of me? Now I'm going 45 miles an hour. Well, not going 45. That's the speed limit. So the speed limit also shows right here as well. Uh, in addition to that other side I showed you earlier in the video. So, um, like I was saying, as I move this closer, see how that car in the screen got a little bit closer? That's basically saying how far that I'm okay with that car being in front of me. So, as you can see, let's do this. So it's very far. It's, it's the furthest distance away, and the car is very far in front of me. So I will speed up for the sake of this example and I will get close to that car or closer than what I think. So bingo. So there it goes. The car is actually slowing down by itself. I'm not doing this. Nothing. So as I speed up and there we go. That's how. F so the car will slow down as it's braking right now all by itself. No foot on the pedal. And it is coming to a complete stop all by itself. See that? So there's a car in front of me. It's too close. Based on the setting that I have here on the monitor. Based on that setting. It's too close. He's still kind of moving forward, creeping along. So my car is creeping along. It is actually slowing down. So it will come to a complete stop as soon as he comes to a complete stop of the car. So it makes sure I do not rear end anybody. Now, now that car is going. See that car moving? I am starting to go by itself, no foot on the gas or the brake, nothing like that. So as long as that car stays outside the range of what my setting is here, my car will accelerate back to the 33 miles an hour that I have it set at. So we'll go past 33 because that's what the cruise control set at. So as you can see, that car is well in front of me. I am back to going. 33 miles an hour based on my cruise control there. See that? Cruise control set at 33. I'm going 33. Now this car just came over in front of me. Oh, he's still farther enough in front of me than when the car didn't slow down. So depending again how you have this set, if I have it set at one bar, see that one bar? I can get really close to that car. And then it'll still slow down. It'll still go through the same steps that it just did that could just showed you. Um, Obviously, I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't want to be that close. So, bingo. And so, it automatically turns off that feature when you hit the when you hit the brake. So when you hit the brake, it turns it off. So, obviously, it knows that you're doing it, you're controlling it, you're paying attention, and uh, you don't have any any issues about hopefully rear-ending somebody. So, um, yeah. And what I want to show you, I want to show you over here on the home button again, the, the attention part. So I want to show you the, so as I go down, what was it? It was driver attention. So you see all those lights are lit up, right? That's on the get, the, the coffee it's saying. You got to pay attention to going 40, 35 miles an hour. So now I'm starting to slow down. See, I slowed down, I'm at 20 miles an hour and the, the bars went off. So as I continue to drive, well, I'm stopped right now, but when I take off again and I get the speed limit up, 
those bars will go from zero to four again. Uh, I haven't seen it where there's one or two or three bars. I've always seen uh, grayed out or all all white. So I haven't seen uh, an opportunity or, or a situation where there's only one or two or three bars. Uh, it's either all or nothing to, to that degree. Uh, and back to that. The steering uh, volume control up there, so I gotta reach for it. So, eh, no big deal. Still have the volume controls here on the steering wheel. Okay, so we're gonna off and run it again. So you'll see, back to this clip, as you'll see, I get, I'm get i getting to 30, oh, there it goes. So I hit about 28, 30 miles an hour, and saying, paying attention, dummy. Um, still 40 miles an hour is the speed limit here. So I'm going 37 miles an hour. I uh, have this bad boy there, so it's not going to let any car get uh, with inside that range. So like I was showing you earlier, let's go back to driver support. So driver support kind of gauges that car right there is kind of where that car is. So you can see it's 110 yards. Once it goes past 110, it stops counting. So let me speed up and get that car within the range. So let me show you. So you'll see it's 115, 109, 107. So it actually tells you how far that car is. That car, right up there, is from your, uh, from you. So, and obviously, since I have that setting in all, all four ra full range, the car is actually slowing down again by itself. Um, and now if I change that to that range, I can get a lot closer. See that, I'm at 40, 39. Now, granted, if I press the gas, I can override it. Don't want to. Uh, but so there you go. 17 yards in front, and there's a car, roughly. 10 yards. Uh, very close. So you kind of see that in correlation to how this helps uh, the driver assist and driver support system. So kind of makes sense. I hope so. Uh, all right. So enough of me playing around while trying to drive. Cause that's not very uh, healthy or safe um, but so now okay now we're on the inside the car and we'll talk about the wonderful display the screen or the stereo touch screen all the controls on the um, steering wheel and um, all of the bells and whistles that come on the inside of this cabin uh, cabin like it's a truck but that's all right um, so what I want to talk about is the display. The display itself is in uh, two parts. So analog over here on this side, uh, digital here, probably like a 60-40 split. You have 40% of it over here is the traditional side, and they have the digital side over here. And what I mean by that, as you just saw, voila, you can customize this left-hand side however you want. Um, tachometer, like most people probably will, and then you have different features, uh, which we will get into. So, uh, that being said, let's talk about the steering wheel itself. Obviously, on this side, you have your, trying to get a good view for you guys. Whoop, maybe, there we go. So we have uh, your standard cruise control buttons here, and your, um, whoop, push the start right there. You have your uh, lane assist here, and your, um, Front end crash protecting uh, the sensor, the Honda sensor I talked about earlier is here. So all this is tied into your Honda sensing uh, for safety features, which is very nice to have. And then on this side, you have your volume up and down. You have your changing the stereos here, channels, stations, and you have your standard Bluetooth uh, connected connectivity buttons. You also have, although this is automatic, you still have your um, shift pedal shifters or right here up and down so this is the plus that's the minus your standard uh, windshield or light um, triggers here your windshield wiper triggers on this side and uh, so what I want to talk about real quick is the um, the display itself so we'll talk about the display now so on the dash I just showed you a second ago, you have your home and your tachometer there, and uh, we can change that. 
based on what we want to see. Fuel and range. So fuel and range right now. I got a range of 73 miles left on this tank of gas. Uh, I've gone uh, 26.6 miles average. Uh, and this, uh, my trip A, as you can see, I can change that, trip A and B, uh, and it changes. So trip A, uh, I got 297 miles on this trip. On this one, I haven't reset trip B, it's the entire life of the car. Uh, and that one's 20, 2020, 2010, or 20, 2201, sorry. Uh, and average fuel is 30 miles a gallon. Uh, so then we can go to home again, go down to speed and time. So this one tells you, uh, again, I'm on trip A, as you can see in the bottom. Uh, I've been driving an average of uh, 20 miles an hour. Elapsed time driving on this tank, on this trip, is 14 hours, uh, 41 minutes. And obviously, if you have your car in start and you're driving, or you're not driving, you're just idling, that that also counts. Um, so if, if I'm just sitting around doing nothing, and I got my car going, it's going to impact these numbers. Um, back to audio. Audio, of course, is whatever you have on your display, whatever you're listening to, whether it's USB, whether it's uh, uh, ro um, stereo or uh, iHeartRadio, something like that, whatever your Honda CarPlay is. So this is equipped with Honda CarPlay, which is a great thing, or Apple CarPlay uh, as well. So go back home. Your phone, based on what your device is connected, it will show you uh, your last few calls. It'll also allow you to call from here and select from select from a, a, those options that are that are present. Uh, next, oop, traffic signs. So the box there in the middle, 25 miles an hour, is telling me. So on my road that I'm sitting on right now, speed limit on this road is 25 miles an hour. So that uh, obviously identifies if you're in an area that you're not comfortable with, you don't know, you haven't been there. It allows you to be able to. Uh, quickly switch to the screen and know what the speed limit is so you're not you know obviously in an area that you don't know you don't want the speed limit is and you want to be obeying the law right okay uh, back to the home screen uh, driver support uh, system so this is all relative to the um, Honda sensing and so as I push buttons on the steering wheel you'll see um, how far so you'll see the lines that continually change on the bottom left and those lines get closer and further away and those lines are relative uh, and, and tied to the lines you see up there in the top in the middle uh, and that's all based on personal preference how close you're comfortable with cars being um, you being able to get close to cars from a from a driving standpoint uh, and this is this allows your Honda sensing to be able to self brake and protect you um, so whatever this is set to your Honda sensing will uh, if, if it's turned on of course will uh, ensure that you do not get any closer to cars um, relative to, to these buttons here so the, the settings here so and, and lane departure the, the lane is also tied together with this too and that is these lane uh, images there and right there so that's all relative to the Honda sensing tool uh, and technology that's built in built in as well driver attention this one I get a kick out of and I say that because um, and I'll show you later in the video that uh, if you're going I want to say under 30 miles an hour these little bars are all grayed out uh, when you get over 30 those bars go solid white um, so I guess it's to tell you that you need to pay attention when you're going fast or faster than 30 miles an hour uh, that you got to be alert uh, so I've never seen it at one bar two bars or three I've always seen all gray or all white um, so not really 100% sure why that is what it is but I think there's better options with inside these features here than this little sucker uh, maintenance. Maintenance is oil life that's uh, on the car. Uh, so I've gone over 2,200 miles um, and I still have 80% oil life. So based on that, probably can hit uh, 10,000 miles, maybe, depending on how much uh, city and, and um, highway driving I do. Probably not going to wait that long to get it changed, but if you just take the mathematical equation, you can probably get to 10,000 miles. Uh, system support. 
So this is where you have your Honda sensing items turned on or turned off, uh, whichever you prefer. And so I, there's a button right over here, this one right here, that one, uh, relative to the setting that you see here. So I can turn either on or off, I can change it. So that's the front end collision uh, mitigation braking system and my lane departure mitigation as well. So I can turn either one on or off, depending on which one I want. So that is now off by pressing the little um, wheel on the steering wheel, and I can turn that off as well. So both of these are now off. Now, of course, I do not want them on. I mean off, I want them on. So there we go. So um, now we go back home, and then we have warnings. Not really sure what's embodied in this one, but. Uh, Google will share with us what that means maybe someday. Uh, I just don't I haven't looked at it uh, Still fairly new to, to all the settings and Back to tachometer because that's what I like to do So that's the display again analog and you have your standard um, Temperature gauges there and your fuel on the other side the bar around the side see that light that white bar that kind of goes around the side and same thing on this side uh, depending on obviously if you're driving um, if you're driving economy uh, those those lights can be um, that green to tell you that you're driving your optimal uh, driving conditions and you're getting the highest fuel mileage when it's white you're not getting very good fuel mileage so as you can see it's white for me right now because I'm sitting and the car is idling turned on so I'm not getting the best fuel mileage right now because of that all right, so now over to the display. So the display has two uh, functional features to it or two uh, options to control it. You have your uh, touch screen, which is here in the middle, and then you have your regular um, navigation buttons here on this side and over here. Um, we also have the standard radio tune there along with um, your volume up and down here. Uh, so kind of show you what all this is so you have your you can change your radio stations here by pressing the other uh, buttons you can do suit seek tune scan as well uh, station list I like station list because if you're in an area where you're not familiar with the stations you can uh, go station list and it'll tell you uh, it'll scan up obviously everything in your area and you can move that sucker up or down so if you're not um, if you go to an area you're not familiar with, you can easily navigate to say, I want to listen to some jazz music or some, or, or whatever it may be, uh, journey, and it tells you where you run out, right? Um, so you can do that from there, which is very nice now I'm at the end, can't go any further that way, see? Uh, so I like that, especially when you travel. Um, your home button takes you to the home screen and your settings. Uh, this is all touch screen, very customizable, so you can touch any of these icons. So if I want to touch and move SMS, you can see now it's all interchangeable. I can move any of these icons around I want. Just switch those two, move this one over here, um, right? and it changes. So, and then you have your done button, so you can do done, you can do tips. Tips are good, are good to learn how to use the system and what to do. The add button if you want to add icons, which you can do that. You can customize the modes. Uh, reset and hide. So I will reset and put everything back to the way it was before I started messing with it. So um, you have your back button here. I don't know if you can see that back. Um, your light control. So if you're one of those people that like your stuff very bright, you can do that. Or somewhat dim I like it being dim um, and you have your so now we hit home back to the home button so you have your controls here if you want to change channels up or down so you can see me changing channels so I don't need to necessarily use the old-fashioned tuner button there I can do it all uh, through the buttons here your clock is right here on the top right changes to that it tells you what time it is what day it is yes January 27th uh, Saturday um, I can hit the home uh, phone button. No phone is connected, 
so it's not going to show anything it's just going to keep searching and it's going to say no phone connected i have the audio button here on the right it's going to take me back to the the radio button the radio display and up here in the top you have your what channel you're on the station you're on and your audio and your fm uh, buttons and your phone button there too so if you want to do the old style buttons you want to use the old style tuner to change the station or you got some buttons here or you can just use all the touch screen there you have your wonderful um, hazard if you need it hopefully you don't uh, airbag on or off and then your displays uh, relative to the climate control turn off on you can sync it between both sides uh, you can also, so one thing I do want to touch on, which I think I probably already did, but I'm going to touch on again since. So as I go up in temperature, the display in the back of the knob turns relative to what direction I'm going, which is very nice. Funny. I mean, not funny, but good. And just cosmetically, it's, it's, uh, it's nice. So that is the front display, steering wheel, control panels and all the bells and whistles on the interior side that I think is uh, makes Honda what I do know as of today, not when I bought it. When I bought it, I bought it in December. Um, I think early January was when they announced uh, Honda Accord 2018 was the car of the year. Um, so uh, I'm very proud that I got this sucker. Uh, I'm very happy with it and uh, definitely uh, goes a long way to making the job drive experience uh, very enjoyable.